and now we're delighted to uh, welcome Judy Lou here today. I'm so glad you could uh, be with us today and she is a PhD student in the Faculty of Health Sciences Department at Simon Fraser University and a research assistant for the Youth Development Instrument. And Judy's presenting on climate concern and echo anxiety in BC youth, findings from the 2023 Youth Development Instrument. Welcome here. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Judy Blue. Um, I'm a second year PhD student um, at Southern Bridge University. Um, I previously did my studies at the University of British Columbia, um, and I did an MCH there as well as a uh, Bachelor's of Science um, specializing in biology. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting on my work regarding climate concern and eco-anxiety, um, specifically findings from the Youth Development Instrument, which is a survey project that I work on. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to acknowledge that today I'm presenting on the traditional and ancestral and unceded territories of the Tuolumne people, um, as well as the work that is conducted um, is, is done on the traditional um, ancestral and uh, ancestral territories of the two Kukulim, Squamish, and the Sumerian peoples as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so there's a wide range of uh, emotions related to climate change and broader environmental issue, uh, but in my work I focus on something specifically uh, called eco-anxiety. Um, and definitions can range, but broadly eco-anxiety can be described as mental distress um, or anxiety associated with worsening environmental conditions. And experiences of eco-anxiety can include disruptions to cognition, such as excessive rumination, disruptions to daily life, um, such as work or sleep, and increased emotional experiences, um, such as like lots of crying. Uh, but what's particularly concerning is the impact that eco-anxiety may have on children and youth. Um, and that's because younger generations are likely, or more likely, to experience climate and environment-related stressors, um, since we're living in a time with the greatest impacts thus far. Uh, children and youth are also at an important developmental period in their lives, which can be heavily impacted by stress. Um, and in fact, chronic stress can actually cause structural changes in the brain, um, which increase chances of developing um, mental health disorders such as anxiety or depression, or may exacerbate existing mental health disorders. Um, and it may also cause youth to uh, turn towards maladaptive coping strategies such as substance use. So the purpose of my PhD work um, is to estimate the prevalence of climate concern and eco-anxiety in BC, um, and to also identify associated factors, or associated demographic factors, I should say. Um, and ultimately, the, the goal is to use these results to inform the development of resources um, that are youth-specific. Um, so data for the studies collected, um, as I mentioned, through the Youth Development Instrument, or the YDI, um, it is a school-based survey for grade 10s to 12 in BC, um, and it's aimed at identifying resources, opportunities, and practices that contribute to positive youth development. Uh, the YDI is led by my doctoral supervisor, Dr. Hussein Samji at SFU, um, but it's also a larger collaboration between the BC CDC, SFU, um, and the Human Early Learning Partnership at UBC. So it's a really lengthy survey. This is, these are all of the things that are included on the survey. It takes about 45 minutes to complete, um, and it's over 200 questions long, and we actually implement the survey in schools. So instead of students doing their history class or math class for that uh, period, they'll be doing the YDI survey. Um, and so there's five dimensions on it, including social and emotional uh, development, social well-being, learning environment and engagement, physical and mental health, and navigating the world. And the navigating the world section um, asks questions about um, like uh, views that aren't necessarily captured in other youth surveys. So we ask about things like multicultural ideology, um, as well as civic engagement, and the items that are specifically related to climate change and um, eco-anxiety are in this navigating the world section. So the entire survey isn't about the environment, uh, just the smaller section is. Um, and we chose to include both climate concern or climate worry and eco-anxiety because what's, be, what's been seen in the adult literature is that these two um, phenomena are different. So we can have a lot of people who may feel worried about climate change, but it may not manifest to that a later point of eco-anxiety where it's causing disruptions to somebody's daily life. So in 2023, we had 147 schools participate across BC, and those pinpoints are all the school districts that are participating. Out of 60 school districts in, across the province, we had 28 um, involved, and that led to about 
uh, a sample size of 14,500. Um, we measure uh, a lot of demographic characteristics, um, including uh, ethnicity or race, and we measure that according to the Canadian census categories. Uh, we also measure gender identity um, by asking whether somebody identifies as a boy or a man, girl or woman, or non-binary, or there's also an open text box if they like to uh, identify it another way. Uh, we also ask whether students were born in Canada, uh, many of which you are, uh, as well as, oh, I should say, uh, not ethnicity, but uh, parental or legal guardian education, um, as well as family affluence. And family affluence is uh, measured um, on a validated scale that then categorizes uh, affluence into low, medium, and high. So here are the results from the climate, con climate change concern section. Uh, so there are three items here, and the prompt starts with, regarding climate change, uh, I feel the threat should be taken more seriously, I feel that I'm worried about its consequences, and I feel that it's a phenomenon that is harmful to humans and nature. And these are the findings from the last uh, three years of survey. Um, of the YDF, uh, with the blue being the most recent survey. So as you can see, there is a very high percentage of uh, students who report agreeing with these statements. So we see that youth are engaged with climate change, they do care about it, and there are um, worries about it. Um, what's interesting is that we do see a little bit of a dip in the most recent year. Ooh. Oh, I've gone the other way. There we go. Um, so we were seeing maybe closer to 80% um, for some of the items are over 80%, but then within the last year it was closer to maybe 70%, and that might be a result of uh, the demographic uh, that we included, so more students in the lower mainland were doing the survey in the last year, um, and perhaps living in an urban environment could have uh, resulted in those uh, differences in results. Um, to measure eco-anxiety, we use a, a shortened version of the HOG eco-anxiety scale, so uh, this was published in 2021, and uh, this is the prompt for the Equal Anxiety Scale. Over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by the following problem when thinking about climate change and other global environmental conditions? Um, and it provides some examples here. Um, and the full scale is 13 items long. Uh, and we actually went to our Youth Advisory Council, which is a group of youth who um, we work with who are across the province, um, and they gave us a youth perspective on all of our research. And they looked at the 13 items and they said, this is awful. Like, this is too many questions about climate change. Not all of them make sense to me. I think some of, um, some of them were saying that, like, you know, some of the items were a little bit silly, even, and that it, it made it seem like the, the topic wasn't as serious as it was. So we asked them, okay, out of these questions, what would you like? So we reduced the questionnaire down to the six items that you see here. So feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge, unable to stop thinking about future climate change and other global environmental problems, difficulty sleeping or concentrating, difficulty enjoying social situations, family and friends, difficulty working and or studying, and anxious that your personal behaviors will do little to help fix the problem. And there's four response options here, not at all, several of the days, over half the days, and nearly every day. Um, so I'm just presenting the, the most pertinent findings. Um, so most commonly reported was feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge um, regarding uh, climate change or other environmental problems. So uh, the furthest bar here on that side, um, that re represents not at all. So 55% of students reported not feeling any of these, um, feeling any nervousness or anxiousness about uh, climate change or the environment, uh, whereas 45% did feel um, some sort of uh, anxiety about it. Um, similarly, about 40% of students reported feeling anxious that their personal behaviors will do little to help fix the problem. And as you can see, the higher up we get in frequency, um, the lower the percentages. Um, other ones that we saw, unable to stop thinking about future climate change and other global environmental problems and difficulty working and or studying, a lower proportion uh, reported feeling this, so about 30% of students reported having ever felt this in the past two weeks. Um, so there's actually no scoring on the HOG eco-anxiety scale, and they probably do that to prevent pathologizing of eco-anxiety. Um, what we don't want to say is, like, uh, if you have this kind of intense worry about climate change, that you now um, have a mental health disorder or something along those lines. Um, but what I've done is uh, I've created my own score um, to try and just represent people who are having more frequent and severe um, experiences of eco-anxiety. So I won't get into the specifics of how to calculate it, but essentially I used the uh, method that is used to calculate the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Scale, or the GAD questionnaire. Um, and a threshold score of greater or equal to 9, so if you added up all of uh, the scores on those six items, if somebody scored over 9, 
um, then they were classified as having significant um, or frequent eco-anxiety experiences. And when we applied that to our sample, we had about 13.5% of students who um, identified that way, or uh, close to 1,500 students. Um, I also did a logistic regression um, that is identifying the uh, demographic characteristics of people who um, were had an increased odds of having um, significant or um, frequent eco anxiety experiences. So I included uh, the demographic variables that I had included um, in the table earlier. Um, but this is a very hard slide to read. Um, but so I condensed it down. Um, so essentially, uh, those who had significant eco anxiety or uh, uh, more frequent eco-anxiety experiences were more likely to class be classified as having an other racial identity not listed in the Canadian census, identify as two as LGBTQIA+, um, have medium or high financial pressure, um, or they screen positive for anxiety or depression, and we know that because we also include depression and anxiety questionnaires on the uh, YDI. Also, decrease in, uh, odds of East Asian identity. Um, and the next step to that is to take these findings to youth and see what they have to say about them, and that's the next part of my thesis work. Um, so here are just the quick conclusions. I know I'm out of time, um, but I've already talked about all of these already. <laughs> um, thank you to my lovely team, um, as well as SHRP and CIGR, who funds it on the YDI, and I'm happy to take any questions. And this is all my time. Do you have any um, early ideas on why the East Asian population might be um, that are sort of protected from anxiety? Yeah, that, um, it's something I thought about a lot as somebody who is of East Asian heritage. Um, I think uh, it was very peculiar to me when I saw that finding um, because I myself experienced really significant eco anxiety and have so since high school, which has kind of really um, led to my current uh, academic work. Um, I, I think it is a part of a cultural thing. Um, I think oftentimes in East Asian households, and I don't want to generalize, uh, but what I see anecdotally is that um, there are different priorities um, and the environment may fall uh, lower on the list of priorities. Um, this may also be a result of, um, like again, the population we have. So East Asian um, respondents to the YDI might also be more likely to be international students. I haven't done that analysis yet. Um, and if they're more likely to be international students, then um, perhaps like these ideas of um, in the environment and climate change um, are not as well taught in other countries, and when they come here, uh, it's, it's still a new sort of uh, environment or a uh, new sort of like topic to them as well. Um, so yeah, so that, that's definitely something I want to delve more into, and again, that's why I'm going to youth um, in the future to say like, okay, is, are my like inklings correct, or is it something completely different? Thank you so much, oh, Judy. Oh, you lots of questions. I'm happy to talk afterwards. <laughs>